Hi there. If you're a keen investor and managed to stay ahead of the market recently, tell us, was it pure luck or was it something else? A great investment strategy or perhaps sheer intellect? Or was the best investment you made at taking stock? Did you scale new heights with that overlooked high-rise property? Find us on Facebook and tell us all about it. And remember, you can find highlights of past episodes on our website at chongnewsasia.com slash moneymind. We're just a couple of key taps away. In our Spotlight segment, we usually put someone in the hot seat. But this week, we're making an exception. We're putting this, the iPhone, into focus. To be more precise, what people are putting into their phones. And with the new iPhone 4 to be sold in Singapore soon, is there an opportunity in the app's business? These Apple devices have always been viewed as cool gadgets for the lifestyle conscious. Look deeper into the mobile device itself and you'll discover a ton of apps that you can download. At last count, Apple says there are about 225,000 apps available in its app store. More than 5 billion apps downloaded in the last two years. App developer revenues, 1 billion US dollars and counting. And some Singaporeans are getting into the action as well. Among them, software developer Mugunt Kumar. He published four free apps and one paid app. One of his apps helps plan your train ride on the entire mass rapid transit system. Say for example, I want to travel from say Raffi's place to uh, somewhere in northeast, which is like uh, say Sarangun or Kovan. And it automatically tells me how many minutes it approximately takes and uh, it computes your route. And if you run out of money, check out his ATM locator app. For CBC, POSB, UOB, Citibank, uh, ATM5, DBS, Maybank, virtually every ATM that, that have uh, kiosks in Singapore. Best of all, some of these apps are free, but why give it away free when you can charge for it? It's a good way to showcase your, your idea to people so that people can try out your apps first before purchasing them. And some, some developers make free apps for uh, brand awareness. And that's what some businesses have done to increase their presence through another platform. Whether or not the app is actually useful to you is another matter, but at least it connects you to them. Oh, in Singapore, we are seeing some um, companies, the in, more innovative ones, slowly starting to tap into the market, uh, mainly more for branding purposes. Uh, we haven't seen many apps that really target the commercial uh, sector. Sometimes make, developing a pro program for a phone can be quite a hefty investment because if it's a commercial product, for example, a bank trading platform, uh, it needs to be a lot more robust. Okay, good evening. And it seems Singaporeans are eager to learn how to make iPhone apps. Adrian Chua and his business partner say they can teach anyone how to make an app in one day. They've had nine classes since May this year. About 40 people have gone through their one-day lesson. They're as young as 13, all the way up to those in retirement, and everyone else in between bankers, professors, and even a homemaker. They are looking to learn a new skill and hopefully the apps that they make can bring them some passive income. And there are also uh, people who want to make apps for their own children for educational purposes. Making an app is one thing. Making it an international bestseller is quite another. Just browse through Apple's App Store and it's clear not every app will be a winner. Even if you think you've designed a killer app that's ready to roll, you've only just begun. You need to know how to uh, include all the marketing skills to make your apps known to people, especially if you're targeting the worldwide market. For all of the iPhone success, it's not without problems. Soon after launching the iPhone 4 in the US, some customers complain of poor reception strength when the phone is held a certain way. Review magazine Consumer Reports told people not to buy the iPhone 4 for that reason. Still, 
Apple sold more than 3 million of its iPhone 4 in five countries. And this is before the rest of the worldwide launch. When the iPhone 4 is officially sold in Singapore, all the major telcos will be selling it. But will the sales be hit by initial technical glitches and bugs? Knowing how tech crazy Singaporeans are, I don't think there will be a sharp fall in um, demand when the phone launches. There will be some caution. Definitely, you know, after hearing uh, issues about the new iPhone 4, the early adopters, uh, these people are typically the ones who are, or they treat the iPhone as a lifestyle uh, gadget. So I guess these guys would still um, be wanting to buy the iPhone 4. Whether you end up buying the device sooner or later, or help design a killer app, one thing's for sure, it's likely the iPhone and future versions of it are here to stay. And with that, we've come to the end of this week's program. If you have a comment, do drop us a line. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook and say hello. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.